So hello and welcome to this lesson on numerical differentiation. So we have already discussed numerical integration. And in this video, we seek to go through how we can find solutions to ordinary differential equations using numerical methods. And we are going to go through three methods. So we go through the Euler's method, then the Rangikuta second order method, and the Rangikuta fourth order method. So in this video, we will go through the Euler's method. In the next video, we will go through the Rangikuta second order, and the next one, Rangikuta fourth order. So the Euler's method, or Euler's method. So the Euler's method is a numerical technique which is used to solve ordinary differential equations of the form dy dx equals f of xy where we have y of x naught equals <coughs> y naught. So that means it is used to solve first order ODs with initial conditions, right? So that means it solves initial value problems. So let's go through the derivation of the Euler's method, how to derive it. So you know dy dx is just change. Okay. So we are saying let dy dx be approximated by change in y over change in x so y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0 and we are seeing let that be equals f of x0 then f of x0 y0 okay so this implies that we have y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0 to be equal to f of x0 y0 then when we decide to cross multiply we are going to get y1 minus y0 to be equal to f of x0 y0 then x1 minus x0 then when we decide to make y1 a subject we get this here so to find y2 what we do is that y2 will be equal to you see here y1 is equal to y0 then we have x0 y0 x1 minus x0 so to get y2 it will be equal to y1 plus f of x1 y1 then x2 minus x1 you should see some relation there and y3 will be equal to y2 plus f of x2 y2 x3 minus x2 so we do this up to we get y of n1 y of n plus 1 will be equal to y of n plus f of x n y n multiplying x n plus 1 minus x n where x n plus 1 minus x n is equal to h which is some interval or some step size so that means wherever you find x n plus 1 minus x n we can put h there so hence the oldest method for solving ordinary differential equations of the form dy dx equals f of x y given an initial condition y of x naught equals y naught is given by what you can see here so you see we've been able to derive that and it was very simple so we are going to take two examples to explain what we just learned so the first example says a ball at 1200 Kelvin is allowed to cool down in air at an ambient temperature of 300 Kelvin. Assuming heat is lost only due to radiation, the differential equation for the temperature of the ball is given by what we can see here with an initial condition theta of 0 equals 1200 Kelvin where theta is in Kelvin 
and t is in seconds that's time so the question says we should find the temperature at time t equals 480 seconds using Euler's method and we should assume a step size of h equals 240 seconds then the second question says for the initial value problem y prime plus 2y equals 2 minus e minus 40 with an initial condition y of 0 equals 1 we have to use the Euler's method with a step size of h equals 0 0.1 to find approximate values of the solution at t equals 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. So we are going to solve these two questions. And by the time you are done with that, your understanding of the concept will be better. Okay. So solution. We know that the formula for Using the Euler's method is given by what we can see here. We derive that. Okay. You see, with the question they gave us, the initial condition was that's for the first question. This question, we are solving question one. You can see the initial condition was this. And this was our f of theta t. Okay. So. So this is our f of t theta. Okay, so um, the formula for the Euler's method is y of i plus one equals y i plus f of x i y i h. And the initial condition was theta of zero equals thousand two hundred Kelvin. So what it means is that our xi is equal to zero and our yi is equal to 1200 Kelvin. Okay. So our h, the step size was also given to be 240. So making substitution, we'll have y i plus 1 will be equal to 1200 plus f of 0 1200 times or 240. I hope you get it. Yes. So now you have to find f of 0 1200. And remember, we said that whatever was given here. Is our f of t theta. So that means finding f of 0, 1200. Wherever we find t, we put 0 there. Wherever you find theta, we put 1200. So that is going to give us this. And evaluating that will give us this. Okay. So that means y1 which is equal to theta of 240 because our step size is 240 that means when we do every one iteration it will be 240 doing the second iteration will be 240 plus 240 which will be 480 okay so that means with this question we just have to do two iterations to get to the theta of 480 we are supposed to find for so our theta of 240 which is equal to y1 will be equal to 1200 plus 240 times this and this here is the same as what we, we computed here so computing this is going to give us 106.095 kelvin i hope you understand so that means that we have theta of 240 is equal to 106.095 so that means that our x1 is now 240 and our y1 is now 106.95 we are going to use that to do the second iteration so the second iteration we have y2 is equal to y1 plus f of 
x1, y1 times h. So y1 is 106.095. You have f of, so x1 is 214, and this is y1. Then h is 214, so it's given in the question. So now we have to evaluate the functional value for this. So that means wherever you find theta, we put 106.095 there. And doing that, we end up with 0 0.01759467914. So finally, y2, which is the same as theta 418. I told you when you do every one iteration, it is 240 because the step size is 214. So when we did the first iteration, we found the value of theta at time t equals four m um, two fourteen. So doing a second iteration will be two forty plus two forty, which will be four eighteen. Do you get y to be equal to theta of four eighteen will be equal to one o six point zero nine five plus so now this ten here is giving us zero point zero one seven five nine four six seven nine one four. Time the step size two forty. When we evaluate this we'll get this thing here and adding it you're going to get 110.32 kelvin and this was what the question asked us to find so we have found that so something i have to note is that using a bigger step size in the oilless method provides a huge error so the smaller the step size the more accurate our results so for instance we use a step size of 240. So you see, we only did two iterations to get the 418. If we had used a step size of let's say h equals 120, we'd have had to do four iterations before getting theta of 418. And this would have given us a more accurate result than using a step size of 214. So that means when we use a smaller step size, we have to do more iterations and that will make the results more accurate than using a bigger step size, which will let us do just smaller iterations. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's solve the second example. So now we have y prime plus 2y equals 2 minus e minus 40. And you have y of 0 equals 1. So here, when we decide to write it in this form, so here we have divided t equals f of ty. That means we have to send this to the right hand side and that will give us this, okay? So that means whatever we have here will be our f of ty so f of ty will be giving us 2 minus e minus 40 minus 2y and you see the initial condition given in the question was y of 0 equals 1 so that means t naught is 0 y naught is 1 so our first our oilless method will be y of i plus 1 is equal to y of i plus f of t i y i h and getting y1 so when i is there we get y1 to be equal to y naught plus f of t naught y naught times h okay and t naught is the same as zero and y naught is one so that's why you can see that y1 is equal to y0 plus f of 0, 1, each. So finding f of 0, 1, that means wherever we find t, you put 0 there. Wherever we find 1, we put 1 there. So computing that will give us negative 1. And from the question, we are using a step size of h equals 0 0.1. So making substitution, we'll get y1 will be equal to 1 plus 0 0.1 times negative 1 that's when we find f of 0 1 and computing that will give us 0 0.9 so what it means is that the approximation at t1 equals 0 0.1 is y1 is equal to 0 0.9 
So we are going to use T1 Y1 equals 0 0.1 0 0.9 for our second iteration. So at our next iteration, we have Y2 equals Y1 plus F of T1 Y1 H. And this will give us Y2 will be equal to Y1 plus F of 0 0.1, 0 0.9 times H. So now we have to compute this. So we get F of 0 0.1, 0 0.9 will be equal to 2 minus E minus 4 0 0.1, then minus 2 times 0 0.9. And computing that will give us this. So that means we'll come to our formula. Then we get Y2 will be equal to 0 0.9 because Y1 is 0 0.9. Then minus the whole of this time is 0 0.1. And when we go through our commutation, we'll get 0 0.85296795. So therefore, the approximation to the solution at T2 equals 0 0.2 is Y2 equals 0 0.85296795. Okay. So that means with our third iteration, we are going to use T2, Y2 equals 0 0.2 and the value here to do the third iteration. So doing that will give us Y3 to be 0 0.83744150. When you do the fourth iteration, you'll get this. When you do the fifth iteration, you'll get this. So can you go through that? So when you go through, I'm supposed to get these answers to king and that means that what you you did is right so that'll be all for the video on the oilless method so in our next video we'll talk about the ranjikuta second order so thank you and see you in the next video